it's quite obvious that face masks have pretty much become mainstream over the past two years. And I remember the first time that I had to grab one to go into a store, the first thing I did is put that up to my face and I thought, oh my gosh, this thing smells like chemicals. What is in this thing? Well, this article is going to help us understand that. It goes over the chemical cocktail that is actually found in face masks. Now, this is incredibly interesting because I'm somebody who has a very strong nose and I tend to smell things that other people don't. I mean, you could ask my staff. I literally don't allow any type of uh, perfumes or anything in the clinic because the smells are just overwhelming to me. They'll give me headaches. And so I smelled these and I thought, this cannot be good. And well, turns out it's not. And we'll discuss this further. But before we get started, I'm Dr. Nick Swarovski. Welcome to the channel. Be sure to subscribe and remember to hit that notification bell because the subscribe button hardly does anything on YouTube anymore. And then give this video a like and comment below and it'll help get this video out to more people. Then lastly, if you want to check out my whole library of natural health videos, go to www.drz.tv. Let's go ahead and kick this off. Initial analytical tests by both of these experts have now thrown in doubt the wisdom of whether people should be wearing certain types of face masks for hours on end. Now, there's no studies of people who people wearing face masks eight hours a day, five days a week at their job. There's nothing out there. And we have to remember that our lungs are actually a detox organ. And so breathing in your own air all day long is probably going to have some negative consequences, particularly school children, factory workers, and long haul flyers who may be at a greater risk from the long-term damage to lungs through exposure of both restricted chemistry, right, and also microplastics, perhaps outweighing the short-term risk of any exposure to the coronavirus. Wow, they're actually saying, and I'm not going to go over all the statistics. I've done this a million times on the channel, but they're saying that, you know, the problems that may come out of wearing masks could outweigh the ones that uh, we're dealing with right now, such as COVID. And th the fact is, is nobody knows. Like I said, there's no long-term study on this. So some people who, you know, go and say, oh, well, doctors wear them. No, no, no doctor wears a face mask five days a week. And I mean, literally, if you were a doctor and you were going to fall into that position, uh, you would probably consider that reconsider being a doctor of whatever type it is that forces you to basically live in a face mask. What we are breathing through our mouth and nose is actually hazardous waste, said Professor Brongart, who ran preliminary tests on used surgical masks that found traces of chemicals such as known carcinogens, aniline, as well as formaldehyde and optical brighteners, both heavily restricted for consumer goods by European and U.S. authorities to minute parts per million, okay? And this is something to be very cautious about because if your lungs are a detox organ and you are just sucking in a whole bunch of chemicals, well, that's a little bit scary. Separate studies by Dr. Sedlick have also sh shown the presence of compounds such as 2-butanone oxime, a carcinogen, blocked disocyanates used as cross-linkers for perfluorocarbons, PFCs, on face masks. You know, I'm surprised I'm able to say these names so far. I may stumble here. <laughs> used in the textiles sector as oil and water repellents on fabrics. Byproducts of PFCs are known Byproducts of PFCs are known to be bio-persistent and their use is heavily restricted by authorities in Europe and USA. Last year, a group of U.S. scientists called for all pair and polyfluorinated substances to be treated as one single class of chemistry and said they should be avoided for non-essential use due to their hazardous toxico toxicological and eco-toxicological profile. Now, the uh, doctor says, honestly, I had not expected PFCs would be found in the surgical face mask, but we have special routine methods in our labs to detect these chemicals easily and can immediately identify them. This is a huge issue, he says. It seems this has been deliberately applied as a fluid repellent. It would work to repel the the virus in an aerosol droplet format, but PFCs on your face, on your nose, and on your mucous membranes or your eyes is not good. Along with PFCs, he has detected, besides the PFC crosslinkers, compounds such as formaldehyde and acetylhyde, whereas GCMS 
chromatogram hundreds of peaks from other contaminants. Okay, so they're finding literally hundreds of chemicals in these face masks besides the one that they have identified clearly that I had mentioned. And they're saying, look, this is bad. This is really bad. They go on to saying that the microfibers are actually probably breaking down and you're breathing them in because many people are reusing these masks. They're not meant to be reused. People are shoving them in their pocket. They're pulling them out of their pocket. They're th throwing them in their glove box in their car and pulling them back out and using them. So you're getting a breakdown of it and you're breathing in these microfibers, which is going to be also very dangerous. The article goes on to basically say, um, well, though the surgical face masks are the worst offenders, even wearing cloth, the ones still aren't great because cloth, the cloth that is being used to make these is still going to contain chemicals that you are not designed to breathe in all day long. In fact, you know, all of our clothing has chemicals on it and these different chemicals get into our skin and in our body. I mean, when they did a, a study on, um, the umbilical cord blood from the babies, what they had found in a mother when they tested this is that there was over 300 different chemicals that were already surging through the baby's body before the baby was ever even delivered, okay? That's horrifying. So the idea that these chemicals don't get on us and in us through our clothing and through the air that we breathe, it would be kind of crazy to think that way. So we know that we're getting chemicals from all over the place. Now, the article goes on to talk about potential litigation risk. And what they basically say is like, look, First of all, people who are forcing, you know, um, whether you're a big company or your um, uh, workplace that employs a lot of people, you have potential problems with litigation down the road if you're telling your people you have to wear a face mask. So they're saying like, you know, big companies may want to be a little bit careful and say, hey, the government's, uh, it's the government's fault, but we are not, you know, we, we aren't telling you to do it because there is potential for litigation down the road. If people start to have a whole bunch of lug damage, they can go back to the employer, the company and say, you did this to me. And so it's actually warning um, big companies against doing that type of thing. It talks about big brands um, facing these issues. So anyway, just know that these masks are a big old chemical cocktail and they were never designed for people to wear eight hours a day, five days a week. And whether it's the surgical mask or it's the face, um, the, the, the cloth masks, you know, maybe somebody made them or whatever. I mean, unless you're using like organic cotton or something, uh, there's likely a whole bunch of chemicals in there. So something to think about. Be sure to check out all the other videos on this channel. And of course, put in the comments below what you think about this topic, because of course, this is one that not too many people have thought about. And um, I think it's definitely worth paying attention to and uh, definitely a, a dangerous concept when we think about wearing these masks all day.